Yeah, get ready right now what I'm about to say because you might, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I wouldn't say this except the Spirit of God led me to say it. Now you see why the devil tried so aggressively to discredit my voice. I'm on my sabbatical and the enemy is trying to discredit me. Heck, I found out this past week I was supposed to have been in jail. <laughs> for stealing the tides. Mm. <laughs> and day four yesterday, they were transferring me from one county to the other one. <laughs> I sure wish somebody would have told me. <laughs> Found out my real name is not Creflo Dollar. <laughs> you know what it is? It's Michael Smith. <laughs> unless you show your W-2 form. What you say? Are you listening to what I'm saying? The enemy has got to discredit the voices of faith and grace and truth because he don't want you to know that you can walk on the water if you can look at Jesus. I got to discredit that man before he starts showing people Jesus. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if you think it was something for me to believe God, and let me tell you something about me believing God. I can dream as long as I want to. I can believe God as long as I want to. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. You can't stop me from dreaming. I'm going to dream until Jesus comes. And here's another thing I want you to understand. I dare you to tell me I can't dream. I dare you to tell me that I can't believe God. So I say to you, dream on, baby. Dream on. Don't dream about what you can have. Dream about what the devil said you can't have. Dream for the best. Dream for the best healing. Dream for the best deliverance. Dream for the best house. Dream for the best car. Just because the world don't have it don't mean you can't have it. You are the children of the all. great fight. The enemy, is like he always has, is trying to stop the preaching of Jesus. And we're not going to stop. I never one time, you can attest to it, I never one time came to you and asked you for a dime for this airplane, did I? low dollar asking his members for six five million dollars. I ain't never asked you for a dime. We got over three million partners around the world, three million donors around the world who support the ministry so I can get to where they are. I had a man from the Middle East to send a letter said they cut off my my relative's head. We need you in the Middle East. Here's a check right here for that plan. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot stop and you cannot curse what God has blessed. Are you listening to me? The people that are commenting on the internet don't even know me. They don't know this ministry. They don't know what we do. That's why they ask the question, what does a preacher need with an airplane? If you knew what we did, then you wouldn't have asked that question. But you don't know what we do. So here's what I have. 
now concluded. Birds fly. Fish swim. And haters hate. That's what they do. But I thank God for my haters, because all you do is stir me up. All you do is make me want to do it better. All you do is make me want to pray. You keep me on my face. This ministry, there are things you need to know. This ministry is not a one-man show. This ministry operates under a board of directors. Within that board, there are three committees. There is the audit committee. There is the ethics committee. And there is a finance committee. This ministry pays over $100,000 a year to have an audit. The government doesn't require for a church to have an audit, but we have one every year so we can make sure ain't nobody stealing money. We have an ethics committee to make sure there's nothing unethical going on. And we have a finance committee to make sure that when we decide to do something, that board is on the decision process of deciding that they don't want their pastor to ride in an old plane no more because one, one of them almost crashed in the Pacific Ocean. The other one had the first lady on it. And it, it's our man of God. It's our church. We're not a public organization. We're a private community that gets to decide how we want our man of God to live. We want our man of God to come home. Now, if you want your man of God to ride in some uh, uh, raggedy and crash, that's on you. We don't have a broke community in our church. We're not broke, busted, and disgusted. We believe in prosperity. Amen. Amen. I am on sabbatical resting. <laughs> and the enemy decides, let's discredit his voice while we can. And it didn't work. Because when you mock a spiritual leader that so many people love, you just make them mad. It doesn't work. So here's my advice. You don't like this ministry, turn off television. You don't like this ministry, disconnect from the social medias. And then you'll be happy with who you be happy with. Get yourself some business. <laughs> Amen? We good? All right. We good. I'll introduce him to y'all next week. He got some stuff to tell you. We good. But that's what it's always about. You got to understand how the enemy fights. Yes. Shut down the mouth of truth. Yes. Uh -huh. And that happens all over the world. Yes. When Paul preached grace, you see the tribulation Paul went through. Mm -hmm. And the men of God that preach in grace today, you see what they go through. Amen. But boy, you take somebody preaching grace, faith, and finances. Mm. And he black. <laughs> I mean, I can hear the devil now. Oh, we got to shut that Negro down now. <laughs> and here we are today, showing you that the source of your faith is Jesus. 